let's talk about size tier compaction. The original gangster compaction for Cassandra. It's been the steady Eddie forever. Probably the least favorite and the most favorite of many. It's one of those kind of things that you talk about whenever you're talking to other people working with Cassandra admin. But size tier compaction is a pretty simple process. We have some great animation to show you exactly how it works. So here's a perfect world example. Perfect world, which you will never live in. I'm sorry, but it's a great example, right? So when you're writing out data, let's say these 100 meg SS tables, they flush, you do a SS table flush to disk, here are a bunch of files. What do you do with them? The compactor looks at these files, does a comparison, and tries to compact those smaller files into a larger file. So the data is written in, it's written out. Now you have a new file. The old files can go away. Great. Now, perfect world, meaning none of this data overlapped. There was no data to delete. Every bit of that data was 100% valid. So now you get a 400 meg file out of four 100 meg files. Pretty easy, right? Let me up the game. So again, here's another four 100 megabyte files. What do you do with those? Well, we're gonna create a new 400 meg file. Now we have two 400 meg files. What are you gonna do with those? Well, as the compaction process is running, we're just going to create more of those until it reaches a threshold. The threshold is that minimum number of SS tables before it triggers a compaction, in this case, four. So if I have four 400 meg files, I'm gonna to have to run another compaction to create a 1600 meg file. When we do that, it eliminates those four 400 meg files. I now have one big file. Size tier compaction is taking those smaller files, compact them into larger files, once we get over a certain number of those files, it'll compact again. This process runs continuously in the background. Now, as I'm keep running and those compactions are running all the time, this is a 100% automatic process. Eventually what I'm gonna start seeing is smaller files turning into larger files and sitting there. Because once I get to that larger file, I'm gonna need more of those to compact. Let's consider the worst case scenario. When we have to compact a lot of files, you need to have at least 50% of your disk available to do a compaction. Think of it this way. If I'm consuming more than 50% of my disk and I need to rewrite all of that data again, I'm gonna need to have that much space to do it. If I'm over, if I'm at 51%, 52%, well, it's not gonna work very good because what's gonna happen is it's gonna overflow my disk. So consider this example. So now when the compactor runs and I have exactly 50% of my disk used up, I just squeaked it in. What happens afterwards, and this is the nice thing, that file will stay, it'll be one file, and all those other files will go away. I get my disk space back. Another problem with size tier compaction is I might have data scattered all over the disk. So in this example, I have a few different files, each with different people, different places. What I'm doing is I'm combining everything with the state of Texas. That was a partition key. Compaction looks at partition keys and tries to join all of those records together in the same file. That's the point of compaction. But whenever I have more files with that, what happens when I eventually get down to this place where I have tons and tons of records with just Texas in them? Well, here we go. I have a bunch of potentially stale records because now I have updates. Look at Texas of one has Jim. And in the green file, it says Texas one Joe. I need to update that record. Well, since that SS table is so big, it's gonna take a while for that compaction to catch up and overwrite that other file. This is a problem with size tier compaction over time, is that eventually you start getting stale records. Not the end of the world, but it's something to consider. If you're doing a lot of updates and the compactions are running, you're gonna wind up with some possible stale data in the larger SS tables. So what about the SS tables that are all these different sizes. And that's pretty likely a scenario. If you were to go look at your data directory and look at the SS tables, they're not gonna be uniform because your data isn't uniform. But there are rules about how that works. Let's take a look. So in this example, I have SS tables of all these different sizes. These numbers are how big the files are. How am I gonna compact those out? Well, let's run through that scenario. Let's take that 100. That's a 100 meg file. We have this much space to put it in. So we put in the 100, that fits in a certain size bucket, awesome. What if we have a one gigabyte file? Well, that's not gonna fit inside that bucket, so we're gonna have yet another. Now we have this size, but we have two different sizes at play here. How are we gonna mix those together? 
Here comes another file that fits differently. It's gonna have to fit somewhere in one of these buckets. We have a new bucket to create. That bucket now stores that size of file. Now we have this little guy. What are we gonna do with it? Well, it's gonna be in these smaller tiers. And these smaller tiers are gonna be a problem over time because those are gonna have to add up and be combined together. But now what we have are these buckets and these buckets will store like sizes and it'll start grouping our data very nicely at this point. And as you can see, all these buckets are being filled up and over time you're gonna have these neatly arranged buckets of data with the size of data that we are giving it from the type of data that we're writing to the system. So what's going on here is that we're trying to group these tables together. We're trying to group similar sizes together. That is important for like trying to keep the stale data to a minimum. If we have a lot of large files and large data sets, we wanna group those together. If we have small ones, we wanna group those together. Any of these tiers below the minimum compaction, that's a setting inside of the table, that'll just get ignored. We won't touch those at all. So any bucket that's over the max threshold will get trimmed to fit just that many SS tables. One of the other factors is this idea of hotness. Hotness is how much is that table being written or used. And it considers that in compaction. It's going to try to compact those files first, just out of an optimization. And that's a really key optimization, especially when we're trying to keep our data fresh and available for reads. Similar size files are always gonna be optimized for, and we really wanna make sure we have the similar size files. So the similar size files have a fair amount of overlap, and that's fine, but we're minimizing write amplification. Write amplification is if I write the data once and it causes an IO event, meaning something written to disk, that it triggers more writing to disk. We don't want it to trigger more writing to disk that triggers more writing to disk that triggers more writing to disk. That's what we're calling write amplification. We want it to just write once, maybe compact once, and be done. For every data that goes into your system, you don't want it to be continuously rewritten. That is a nasty part of write amplification that we're trying to avoid. There's also in size tier compaction, this idea of concurrency. Just because it's compacting two sets of files together doesn't mean it can't do two others. And so there is a choice. You can use concurrent compactors, one of the settings in YAML file, to how many compactors you wanna run. Keep in mind, this is what's gonna eat up a lot of your IO. If you're not using a really robust file system, say an SSD or better, and there are better, then you should really consider how many current compactors you have running right now because that can eat up all your disk IO, and then you start seeing some really weird indications like you're running out of flush writers. The SS tables can't write to disk anymore because there's just no more room to go. There's no more IO to give, the computer gives up, and that's pretty much the worst thing that can happen. You're gonna lose a node. So keep in mind, managing your disk IO is really about how you manage your compactions, 100%. Other writes to the disk, not as important. This concurrency measure can really help you get that disk IO dialed in just perfect. So here's a list of all the things that trigger a compaction, so you know. Remember, this is all automatic. So whenever there's a flush event, meaning the mem table in memory goes down into the disk, so that's a write event, creates an SS table, that means that compaction starts up. So it's gonna have to look to see, okay, am I over my size? When mem tables are too large, they just go beyond their capacity, then they have to be written to disk as well. Other things that can happen are during like a streaming event, like a build or a repair. That triggers a compaction because there's a lot of new data in there, just like if you're writing a lot of data to your node. But that triggers a compaction. Size tier compaction always runs after one of these events to organize and clean up your files. The compaction event will continue to run until it meets the min threshold. Once it hits that, then everything stops. If you're not writing data into your system, compaction will eventually quiesce, stop, and it'll be waiting for more data to be written. Once you write more data in, the compaction process starts up again and starts rewriting your data. And then everyone's dreaded topic, tombstones. Size tiered is really geared around tombstones a lot better than some. So some of the things that can happen there that really are important for tombstones. Tombstones, of course, are deleted data. That data could be in a file for a long time. There is a thing called tombstone compaction. So what it's looking for is a threshold. How many expired tombstones are inside an SS table? So if it goes above 20% by default, it triggers a tombstone compaction. Tombstone compaction is really built for, I gotta clean up a lot of SS tables because I got a lot of deleted data in there. This is really good for you if you're trying to conserve disk space. Think about it, you have a lot of tombstones, you have a lot of deleted data. If you're not compacting it, that data will never disappear. Tombstone compaction helps solve that problem. 
The table has to be at least one day old, or you could change that with the tombstone compaction interval. Say you want to do it two days, or three days, or 10 days, but the default is one day. The compaction process is really trying to ensure that that old data just isn't laying around. This can be a huge problem whenever you have really large files that you're compacting. If you have something that's been compacted for a long time, SS tables can store a lot of tombstones over time. Remember, tombstones are a marker. And until they actually expire, that data isn't deleted until you run a compaction. This forces that process. So what are some of the pros and cons with size to your compaction? Like everything else in the world, there are trade-offs. Understanding what those are are really important. Size to your compaction is a default for a reason. It works in most cases. It's the most generalizable compaction process. It works in the small and the large. Now there are edge cases that are better. You'll learn about level compaction. You'll learn about time window compaction. Size tiered covers most of the bases. The key benefit for size tiered is how it handles ingested data. It is really good for if you have a high write system. If you have a high read system, you may consider something else like level compaction. That gives you more performance in those type of use cases. Or time window when you have a very specific time window data model. If you have a high write system, size tier gets the job done. And then finally, if you are dealing with too much compaction or it's overwhelming my disk, you could throttle it back. There is a setting for that. Compaction throughput megabyte per second is your friend. You could turn that down and really keep the compaction from eating up your disk. I will say though, if compaction's eating up your disk, then you should probably consider getting a new disk. Compaction should run fine in a normal operating system. Sometimes if you don't have the luxury of having the best disks, this is the way to throttle back and keep it from eating up your system. And finally, the whole idea of a major compaction. Major compaction is a term we use for when you compact all of the data. Let me explain. You can go to Node Tool and type the word Node Tool Compact. And what will happen is it will create one big SS table of all your data. If that sounds like an awesome idea, let me fix that. It's not. Because what you're gonna get out of this situation is one big SS table that will sit there with anything that needs to be deleted or stale data. It will take some time to get an SS table as large as the one you just created from doing a major compaction. That's bad news, because in the end, what you're gonna deal with is an operations problem. One big file sitting there laughing at all the other compaction processes because it will never get compacted. There is a way to undo this, and this is an anti-compaction, that's covered in another module. If you find yourself with a huge compaction in your hands, then there is a way out of it. Don't worry, we can fix this, but just know that typing no tool compact is a bad idea. So this is an overview of how size tier compaction work. This is the steady eddy of Cassandra world. It's used all over the place, even inside some other compaction strategies. Hopefully this gave you a good overview and you understand how it works so you can tune it properly if you need to.